Hi guys, I just want to actually apologise about the background of this video. It's due to the sorting out that I'm currently doing in my room. It's so nice to say my name's Gavin Fletcher. I'm 38 years old. I've worked the catering and the hospitality industry for over 20 years. From a bartender to a glass collector to a toilet tenant, I've done it. Apart from obviously being the manager, of course. But I just want to say this now that I think Nottingham has actually hit on hard times in this tier too. Now the reason why I'm saying this is because obviously this past week I've seen numerous of things fall before my very own eyes and it's really sad to see. Because obviously yes we've survived the recession, we survived it twice, we survived the smoking ban when that first kicked in, even though it was hard to bring back the custom obviously over the time now we look towards this tier two that was set in place last tuesday but took full action from the thursday obviously over the past week we've actually had numerous of things like pretty much hardly anyone coming to nottingham city center let alone surrounding areas now it's sad to see but it's true the government don't see it from the person that works the industry, even if you're a manager or a glass collector or a waiter, waitress, etc. Because quite honestly, when I see this first time, it upsets me. Quite honestly, and I'm really, really cheesed off and really pissed off to way it's actually gone. To the point where we had the 10pm curfew, we actually survived that okay. But to the point where you actually put a dampen on people's spirits to go out and f scare fear into people yeah fair enough that there is a coronavirus that's going around the uk but has it stopped us in the past no it doesn't because quite honestly yeah fair enough but people need that social ability to go places which yeah fair enough they're still open but when you put them on tier two what actually happens you can't go out to meet your friends or go out with your friends if you do you have to sit out in the freezing cold i think people wouldn't have minded if this tier two was in place over the summer period when it was nice weather believe it or not there was some nice days here in the united kingdom and it actually worked that well but now when you actually put a damper on people's spirits what to do how they're going to enjoy themselves you know i'm not poking fun to anyone that is actually spreading this virus people blame the students people are blaming the pubs the nightclubs the restaurants etc but is it really anyone's fault you can pick it up by a cough you can pick it up any way or form by any individual that has actually got this virus or develops into this virus from a common cold or a flu I love when people say to me when I work this industry that oh um more people die of a stroke etc but you can't catch a stroke you can catch this yeah fair enough you can catch this any time of the day but the problem is where it lies is when people say oh think of the amount of lives you're saving now Am I really saving lives now when I've got no one to pretty much serve? You know, it's bad enough where I actually work at the moment because quite honestly, we've been hit hard near the Broad Marsh area towards the ocean. Right, I'm not keeping the pub nameless, but I just want to say this now that the pubs in that vicinity are struggling as it is. It's bad enough when we've actually had Broad Marsh stabbers in the back. Yeah, fair enough, into you went to liquidisation. But the government has actually left it in an eyesore because apparently, if I remember rightly, the grounds of Broad Marsh is actually owned by the council and they are fighting them in court. But from now on, obviously, yeah, you've got that walkway that's open, but it's closed at seven o'clock in the afternoon and people don't want to walk the long way around town. So we got hit hard by obviously the likes of Broad Marsh it ceased to exist. Now, it really frustrates me to see the place that I love working. I hate seeing the way it is. And that's hard for me to say. Because, quite honestly, 
I love where I work. I love the team. I love the management management team. But it's come to the point where we've lost hours due to lack of trade. And it's not the manager's fault. It's not the company's fault. It's the people that used to come in the pub no longer come in the pub because obviously because of this virus that is running rampant around the United Kingdom, it's made offices around our area close. We used to be so busy, it was unbelievable for lunches, etc. And now we're just like a pretty much of a ghost town as compared to what we used to were. It's not just us that's been affected, it's basically the whole of Nottingham. Because we're actually on tier two. But the reality check was, for me, that really upset me, that a wedding of six people that came in towards last orders on Saturday, they shared a cupcake in our beer garden. They couldn't even sit inside. Yeah, fair enough, they had a glass of Prosecco to toast the wedding couple. But we tried to make the best of it for them towards last orders in the beer garden. They couldn't even sit in the warmth. Yeah, fair enough, we've got patio heaters, but that still doesn't make them feel welcome as much as I would love to make them feel welcome in our vicinity because we're on tier two. If we get caught out, like numerous of places have in the past, which I'll keep nameless, they'll get a fine. And we'll get a, we'll get a fine. A massive fine that will take a big hit on us if we don't follow these government guidelines. But all we can say is when we actually had the opportunity before this tier 2 came in, at least one thing we made people sanitise the hands, make sure they wore a mask, etc. They come nowhere near the bar. We made people feel welcome even though they sort of refused to download the app. It's all this palaver that is basically we've done something to try and kill this virus. And now we've been kicked in the dick massively by this. You know, we've helped the government out. We've helped to stick to government guidelines. But now when we're on tier two, it's making it even harder for us to stick to those guidelines. Yeah, fair enough, the place where I work, we stick to those guidelines. And we take the people's word for it. They all live together. How can we prove that they all live under the same household so they can stay inside to have a nice warm meal, a nice pint or a, co- a spirit? I was going to say cocktail because obviously we've got cocktails coming soon. But it's got to the point where if you get caught out, you get a fine. But we're not supposed to ask for bills. We're not supposed to itemise bill to prove her address, we just take the word for it. And if they're not actually living in the same household and they're proven wrong, we're actually getting a fine. How you expect us to live by your rules nowadays when some places don't have outside seating? Explain this. How as people this day and age not understand this? By working for the government, a lot of places don't have outside seating. That's why some people have probably got a fine over and shut down because they're not sticking to government guidelines. I'm sorry, if you look at some of the venues in my city, they do not have outside seating. What do you want us, What do you want them to do? Actually put a bench, a table out in the smoking area? So there's some outside seating? I'm not being funny, but I suffer with health problems. Yeah, fair enough, I suffer with depression in the past. I'm over that. I'm just speaking my mind right now. So you're telling me that people like myself that has a pacemaker have to sit outside in a smoking area. I don't go, I want a casual drink, like with my friends, etc. But I can't do that because they have to all have to sit on separate tables if they want to stay inside. Imagine having a conversation throughout the pub. You've already took our nightclubs away from us, which is a downside because, quite honestly, these nightclubs that need to survive to bring more economy to my city. People used to tra- travel far and wide to our club scene, to our pub scene, etc. like that. I remember the days when I first started this industry, when I was 18 years old. I used to enjoy going out. I still do enjoy going out, but I can't go out after work. 
because everything closes at 10 o'clock. I used to enjoy going to one place individual that is open till 4 in the morning. Fair enough, it may be more expensive, but at least one thing. They treated you with respect, from the host to the staff members, everyone there. You know, because you work the industry as well. Working in this industry is not just about making the money, economy and everything. You actually create friends. You create extra family members. I, I work with my work colleagues, yeah, fair enough. But I got to the point where I've actually made friends with them, worked with them that long. I classed them as family. And it's hurting me seeing them struggle as well as they're probably hurt about seeing me struggle but we can get through this etc like that all that pep talk yeah if you want to talk to people on this helpline if you want to if it's affected you in a bad way yeah fair enough i'm not disrespecting these helplines that have been set in place but you expect nottingham to survive on tier two no people travel far and wide for our shops so you're telling me when they're in the shops, is there any social distancing in there? Look at Primarchs, etc. Why don't you pass the book on to the people that are shopping as the Tesco's, etc. like that? You know? Everyone is to blame, yeah, fair enough, about this virus running rampant throughout my city and numerous of cities. And people are like saying, oh, think of the lives that you have actually helped survive, etc. like that. If you want to see that point, yeah, fair enough. I'm grateful for helping people to survive from this bloody virus that is spreading. But I'm not one of these people saying to put us on tier two, etc. like that. And people want us on full lockdown, which I can understand. At least one thing, there's actually a bit of economy in towards furlough leave. But the thing is, these companies that are giving out furlough leave, which I've already had, they've got to pay back. And how are they going to make the money if they can't make the money back to pay all these people, the government back for this furlough leave pay? You know, it sucks to see. You know, I'm I'm not saying I'm at breaking point or anything. I just wanted to point my point across. Because the government don't see first hand from the people that are actually working in this industry and see what they actually say. It doesn't. I'm just saying this as a point of view. But I just want to actually say with Not Nottingham Live, a prime example, that every single time I see a post on there, it's about coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. And you, th- you guys are the ones that have been helping scaremonger people into doing what we've done to the point where people are getting pissed off with you. And you are not listening to the people that made your paper in the first place or the pa- Facebook page. And then when you actually decide to report something about the industry that I work and love, like probably any of you guys, they say, oh, it's sad to see Nottingham is a ghost town, on a, normally on a busy Saturday. Why do you think that's happened? Because of people like you that make it worse for everyone at home. And it's really frustrating me to see the industry that I love. For 20 plus years. Seeing this. I'm not going to sit on my hands and be. Hope for the best. Hope for the future. Yeah fair enough. That's just around the corner. But this period is our busy, usually our busiest period. Of the year. And we don't have that anymore. How you expect. And it's bad enough you've already taken away. The football fans from our local state, football teams, Nottingham Forest, Notts County, we survived on that income. Then big payouts when it was match days on Saturdays. And quite honestly, it's, we don't even get that now. I'm not here to disclose how much we took in the last week, but I just want to actually say it was that poor. We used to take that on a quiet day. And that was all last week, what we're taking. And I'm just saying this to you guys that it's hard to sit sit back and say, oh yeah, we're on to, tier two, we're su- su- making people survive. You know, it really frustrates me seeing this industry go the way it is. Because, quite honestly, it is that sort of thing. And 
people never understand it if you don't work it. Yeah, you fit, you could have gone to the pub. You could have gone to a nightclub to enjoy yourself, to set, let yourself loose. No one wants to sit in a pub now, do they? You know, pubs, um, pubs were in turnaround sort of thing. Because, quite honestly, when clubs first closed on lockdown and not reopened, they turned to pubs or late night bars for an alternative. That's where we were thriving. To the point now where you're on tier two, you can't even do what you want to do. You don't want to let loose, so you think, oh, sod it, I'll stay at home. It's not about the money situation, even though the money is the massive part of our industry. You've got to understand that people want to enjoy themselves, and they can't. You know, you look at Freshers Week this week, what were they doing? Isolating. Yeah, fair enough, some students had a party. Yeah, fair enough, they got caught, got a fine. Yeah, he, got, he or she could have got a fine. Yeah, fair enough. But the government wants to make money on these fines when people can't even enjoy themselves in their own city now. You know, it's bad enough that you can't even chant on watching football on a TV in a pub now. To the point where singing and dancing is banned. Here in the United Kingdom, that's not just my city. You know, it's just the way Nottingham is at the moment on the workforce is frustrating. You know, it's like I'm. It's like it's really hard to words put into words and the frustration how I feel and probably you feel. You know, thank God, as far as I can remember, zero hours with contracts. Or like cease to exist, which is a good thing in the long run. But the bad thing about it is, could you be working the minimum hours are required when you could be working full time? It makes you wonder that, don't it? If um, zero hour contracts were actually into play nowadays, would people exploit that? Would it exploit your work colleagues for that and use that to their full extent? end of the day I'm just saying to you guys that this is my point of view what I'm saying to you yeah fair enough that you may not need this as a general income you may have this as your second job but end of the day the people got to realize like myself rely on this income this is my only job this is the only thing I do for a living and I've enjoyed doing this for a living And it's really frustrating to see my city dwindle the way it has. We've hit hard times. And people say you were the ones on Tier 3. People don't understand what Tier 3 involves. It's If you work in a pub that serves food, you have to force them to buy a meal if they want to drink. It's already hard on Tier 2, so God forbid if it was Tier 3. If it was on a national lockdown, again, it probably might help a lot of people out in the process. But it's really, really frustrating to see the way that things are. And I just wanted to put this video out for you guys. hope you can understand. And obviously, all we have to worry about if we do this when our next shift is, when our next paycheck is going to come through, etc. I just wanted to put this personal video out to you guys. I hope you can understand my frustrations at the moment with everything that's going off. But it's funny when you actually see the likes of Derby on Tier 1. This ain't to do with Nottingham versus Derby sort of situation. But it's a massive, massive drop compared to from tier 1 to tier 2 to tier 3. But we're stuck in the middle. Yeah, we're the heart of... People say we're the heart of the UK. But where's the heart gone? You know? Don't be scared off because of virus. Yeah, fair enough, you may have to sit outside. But like I've said, not all places have got places to sit outside. They're fortunate if they have. I want clubs to reopen. 
I want us to have our life back. What Nottingham was made for. For partying. Not just for Robin Hood. It just really frustrates me to see my city the way it is. And if it continues this way, we're not going to have a good Christmas, are we? I just wanted to get this off my chest. I just wish there was a massive reset button on 2020. Good way to start a new decade, eh? Thanks, guys, for listening.